Uh, good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. We are in the city council chambers of Washington City Hall. We are here for our quarterly public forum, which we uh, do the first meeting of each new quarter. And um, council, at this time, I'll just, uh, I'll turn to you to uh, approve this agenda and we'll get the meeting started and open up for public comment. So made, Mayor. I have a motion by Councilman Ivey. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Councilman Coates. All in favor? Aye. The public forum agenda is approved. And um, so the only item on this agenda is comments from the public. And I'll just read a little bit of the ground rules for the public forum. And just for the record, uh, this is where the, the council is able to receive uh, public feedback, um, open public comment. Uh, historically, Washington City has done this quarterly in what we call a public forum. So, so we want to be open and accessible as an elected body. And, and more specifically, this public forum is an opportunity for the council to listen to and consider public comments and feedback. After I open the public forum, I will call up to the podium Washington City residents who have signed up to speak. Uh, those of you speaking, please remember to state your name for the record and address the mayor and council as such. Please make sure your comments um, are civil and well-spoken. Most public comments can be made within about two to three minutes. Um, I did hear something recently about um, a trap door with a delicate latch. I can assure you we don't have one of those here. Um, but as I typically say in, in public comments that clapping or yelling after comments is not a appropriate in, ever in a public meeting. And then council, I just ask that each of you um, uh, listen and take notes during the public forum, and I will give you an opportunity to speak after I close the public forum. Okay, so at this time, I will open the public forum, and I, I know that those that have signed up have done so electronically, so let me just pull that up. And it appears we don't have anybody who has, who has signed up. I, I see Hanna uh, Han back there, just in the back, um, ready if anybody would like to speak. It's not too late. Uh, George, come on forward. And thank you for taking time out of your day to be here. I know it's a special day for you. I'm George Staley, resident of Washington, Utah. I'd like to address couple of issues that I have. Uh, I've addressed it to both the mayor and the people that are doing the construction on the gymnasium or whatever you want to call it, and also the city manager. As construction goes on, it takes away all of the uh, handicapped access we have to the museum. And I've uh, expressed this to you and to the mayor and to the people. So I would like to have some clarification on, are you going to do anything? You're responsible for the outside and the, to get the people in. Are you going to do anything about it or not? The next thing I was going to want to talk about, and I've expressed this with the city manager, is there a bat infestation in the attic of the school that's been going on for several years? They, they migrate and they just came back yesterday. Oh. <laughs> so we have a lot of bat droppings in front of the museum. Uh, I've heard from people that have looked up in the attic, there's about this much bat manure and if we don't <laughs> get it out of there, it's gonna cause a, not only a fire hazard, but a structural damage. So those are the two things that, oh. you know, I've expressed so you can do what you want to. Thank you. Thank you, George. And happy birthday, by the way. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Is there any anyone else who would like to make some uh, public comment during the forum? Okay, uh, before I close that forum, Jeremy, do you do you have any comment on Mr. Staley's uh, uh, questions there, or would you like to get with him afterwards? No, I'm, I'm happy to get with him after. I think I'm aware of both the, the bats coming back is new information, but we appreciate it. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for those comments. Okay, uh, seeing no additional public, I will uh, go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, at this time, Council, I will turn to you um, for a motion to adjour adjourn this public forum meeting. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Coates. Second. Second by Councilman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned for the public forum. This evening is a little different than how we've typically done it. Typically, we uh, have the work session first and then the regular meeting, but because of the um, the items that we needed to work on this evening, I, I changed the uh, the order, so we will have the uh, the regular meeting, which uh, Tara, our recorder, posts to start uh, immediately following the public forum, or at 4:30. So uh, since um, the public forum ended soon, we will we will go ahead and move into the regular meeting now. I'll pull up my next agenda. Okay, today is uh, April 10th, 2024. We're in the city council chambers of Washington City Hall for our regular meeting. Our meetings are streamed live and, and stored for later viewing at washingtoncity.org slash meetings. Uh, we are grateful to uh, Sue Fulmer uh, who is part of the Interfaith Council, who has graciously agreed to come and start this meeting off the right way with whatever she would like to say and with an invocation. Sue, come on forward. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to meet with you today. I'm a religious science practitioner with the uh, Center for Spiritual Living in St. George. A practitioner is trained as a spiritual counselor and in uh, a prayer, as a prayer chaplain. So it's my pleasure to represent the Interfaith Council and to pray with you. We practice affirmative prayer, realizing it is done to us as we believe. As we are one with all creation, I will speak in the first person as I speak for all. Let us pray. And so I align with the presence of spirit, everywhere present, everywhere and always. It is what I call a loving mother, father, God. I recognize the guidance of universal divine intelligence and I claim oneness with God. Knowing my worth as a child of divine parentage, I speak for all creation, all here, and across this great city, state, nation, and throughout our world. I realize the position of authority our leaders hold and bless them with divine guidance and empathy, and especially those meeting today in this place. I am grateful for those who serve this city and for the business carried out today, knowing it is in perfect harmony and the best interest of all. I release my word knowing it is good, it is done, and so it is. Amen. Amen. The beautiful prayer. Thank you. Councilwoman Casperson, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance?
this time, Council, I'll turn to you for an approval of the agenda as outlined, noting that we do have need to go to closed session for purchase, exchange, or lease of property, as well as character or professional competence of an individual. Mayor, right. I need to make one amendment. Okay. If, if it's all right. Um, 5B was a consideration for the uh, St. George Children's Museum or RAP tax application where I serve as the uh, board chair there. I realize that they are not in our city and that they don't have a tax benefit to the city. So I informed them of that and they have withdrawn their application. So 5B needs to be removed from the agenda. Duly noted. Councilwoman Kasman, do you want to go ahead and make your motion with making the note of the Councilman Ivy mentioned? Uh, Mayor, may I? Uh, oops, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Councilman um, Henderson. I, I noticed on the board audit report there's some some issues. I had a couple of questions on the I board audit report as well. So can we pull that out of the? Yeah. The, so so as we typically do, and it's not very common that we pull an item from the consent, but when we get to that item, it'll just require a motion and a second, and then we'll pull that from the consent oh, okay. and discuss that separately. Okay. But thank you, you Councilman. Go ahead, Councilwoman. So for right now, we're just we're making a approval agenda. And removing 5B. Exactly. Do, do we need to deny that or they pull, they pulled their application? Yeah, they pulled it. Okay. Of their own volition. Yeah. So I'll make approval of the agenda with removing the item 5B. You've heard the motion by Councilwoman Casperson. Would someone like to second that motion? Second. Second by Councilman Belliston. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have an approved agenda. Let's move on to announcements. I'm going to list a few and then Council, if there's something I've missed. Uh, please let me know and we'll, we'll get those on the record. Um, it's a busy April. Uh, on Monday, April 15th at 6 p.m. is the Washington County Fair Parade. The lineup for us and those others who will be in the parade is from 4.30 to 5.30 on 300 East near the Community Center and that will follow the traditional parade route. Uh, I'd also just ask you to look online um, anybody who's interested in the other county fair events to look online for for those uh, dates and times. There's a lot happening. Um, next week, April 17th through the 19th, primarily on the 18th, is the Utah League of Cities and Towns Mid-Year Conference. That's at the Dixie Center primarily. If you would like to attend, please let the city recorder know tonight as she's going to make those registrations uh, by tomorrow morning. And then the biggest one, and we talked a lot about this uh, at our last meeting, our Cotton Day celebration uh, begins on April 22nd and goes through the 28th. The parade will be on the 27th at 9 a.m., followed by the Cotton Fest activities in the park. Um, please go to uh, Cotton Days, um, I think it's cottondays.org for, for more information on events, um, dates, and times. But I do want to make special note of the um, the unveiling of the Eric Dowdle painting. It's for the 250th anniversary of America. It's one of 250 paintings that Eric Dowdle will paint. And it, he'll unveil that with the community celebration on Friday, April 26th at 6 p.m. right here at Veterans Park from the gazebo area. And you're all invited to be there and then uh, you may have noticed when you walked into City Hall, we've got the blue painter's tape um, up, uh, outlining where we intend to place that six and a half by eight foot painting once it's done. Um, and then before I invite uh, one of our residents to come forward and present, I'll just look to you, Council, to see if there are any um, items that I have, may have missed on announcements. Mayor, just one amendment. Um, Carmen has asked that we be here at 5.30 for the puzzle on day. Be there early, so 30 City minutes Council early. 530 yeah. great and again I apologize I will not I will not be there my my cute daughter is graduating from Southern Utah University and I will proudly be doing dad duty that night so we just need to get it on our calendar so Tara if you can get that on our calendars at 530 yes. you got that Tara thank you I'm sure she does anything else on that okay Next item, any declarations of abstentions and conflicts? Anything to declare? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. It sounds like there is an item that you'll want to remove from the consent agenda. I will read through that. 
Um, and then if, if someone wants to make a motion, we get a second and vote on removing an item. We'll vote on the remaining items on the consent agenda and, and then move um, forward with the, um, the item that was removed. But before I do that, um, I want to in, invite, um, as part of our announcements, I know we already talked about declarations of abstentions and conflicts, but I want to invite uh, um, a Washington City resident who um, is passionate about, about our city and about the good things that we're doing here. Um, he has a bit of a presentation for Washington City PD, and I will invite Big John Olson to come forward and explain that and, and present what he has. Big John, come forward. Mayor, Council, thank you for having me. I'm here today representing Rowdy's Range. I'm still retired, I didn't <laughs> go back to work. But for the last five or six years, I've been running the bowling pin shoots for them. And this last Saturday, they just had their grand reopening under new owners. And we did our 10th anniversary bowling pin shoot. And part of that shoot, we invited law enforcement agencies from Washington County, set an hour aside just for law enforcement to come down for bragging rights. When the other departments found out that Washington was sending officers, they didn't show up. <laughs> Washington, from the different shooting events that I attend, different agencies I talk to, Washington City Police Department has a reputation of being very good shooters. Not only in Washington County, but in the state. Um, so what our shoot, what we do is we shoot at seven yards, 21 feet. The, the shooters have to start from a low ready position at the sound of the buzzer, come up on target, knock five regulation bowling pins off the table as fast as possible. Chief Williams sent Officer Nash and Officer Little over to participate. We asked them to show up in uniform to do some PR with the customers. Your officers represent this city very well. Officer Nash and his four tables had a total time of 15.6 seconds. He shot a 404. 3.6 and a 5.1. Officer Little had a total time of 15.82 seconds. He shot a 427, a 407, and a 416. Because we didn't have any other law enforcement for them to shoot against, we put them up against the new owners. One of them is a 25-year Air Force veteran and an expert shooter. The other co-owner is um, a veteran and retired North Las Vegas Police Department. We gave them voodoo firearms to shoot, which are high-end race guns made on South River Road. Your officers showed up in their uniforms, wearing body armor, and shot their duty guns. That's like putting a Ford truck on the Indianapolis 500 <laughs> race track. Your officers won. And then we did some shooter against shooter, they won. Then we put the voodoos in their hand. They knocked a second off their time. Officer Nash shot a 2.81 and Officer Little shot a 3.32. So what we have is a regulation bow and pin, Washington City Police Department 2024, Washington City gets to keep it at the department for this year. They can defend it next year. And then I do little mini custom bowling pins, thin blue line for the officers, if we could get the chief to come up and Officer Nash. Um, come on forward. Maybe get a picture so we can put it on the Rowdy's website. And Melanie has pictures of the officer shooting and videos of them shooting if you're interested. Wonderful. So let's do it. 
Um, it's an honor to be here and represent Rowdy's. You're awesome, buddy. Thank you. They're not worth anything yet, but if I get angry enough, they might be. <laughs> so here's Officer Littles. All right, great. Um, you can. They would like you to tag this with one of your stickers. Okay. We want it to get really big, but Chief, thanks for supporting them. Um, coming from a law enforcement background, if you get the officers into competing, it is a benefit to them. And their reputation in the state is very awesome for their shooting. So. Now, we're going to come get a picture, but before we do, I, I can't pass up an opportunity to, to hear from Officer Nash. And, and if, if you could, Officer would you help us make sense of those numbers that Big John shared and just kind of tell us a little bit about how you became such a good shooter, man, come on. Uh, that's a good question, actually. I, competition shooting has always been uh, something I enjoy, something I love. And I, I've taken my personal time to hone that skill, something that I'm passionate about. And so throughout the years, starting about 2016, I began competition shooting um, in the county and throughout the state, um, have had wonderful opportunities to perfect that craft. And it's something I really enjoy. So um, just really practicing and honing those skills in, but doing bowling pin shoots fun. It's fast, it's competitive and, and they're not that big, but at seven yards or 21 feet, it's, it's a fun shoot. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I was surprised that 2.81 was something that I was able to do myself. So that was pretty fun. But yeah, just really, really good and and something that I'm passionate about. So, Well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you for representing. Uh, this was uh, this is a great win for Washington. Well done. It is. Yes. Thank you. Hey, let's go get that picture. You know, just I'm going to take a personal privilege just briefly and about our police chief. Um, last night we had an opportunity to go and, and visit with the community and, and interact with them for, for a little bit and had great interaction and we're, we're leaving the meeting and he's in a, in a different car from the group I was with and going to out uh, down, down Coral Canyon Boulevard, I think it's called. And um, all of a sudden I, I, I look in my rear view mirror and it's lights are on flashing and I'm thinking, oh man, I, I'm, I don't think I was speeding and I don't know if Chief's messing with me or if I was, but, but uh, he, he safely passed me and, and went up over, over the hill on Telegraph. And by the time we got down there, um, he as, as the police chief was on site and um, administering that kind of that first response to uh, what looked to be a pretty serious car accident there. And I just, um, it just kind of, the thought kind of occurred to me that, you know, from the police chief all the way down in that, in that whole department there, you're never off duty. And just to see him there and to see the way that while we were, we were just in, uh, talking and, and enjoying and going back home, back to our families, going to get some dinner and, you know, watch a ball game. And, you know, he was speeding to, to come to the aid of somebody and he was right there alongside his officers. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's so respected amongst the, the, those that he leads 
and the reason that our department, one of the main, many reasons our department is so respected amongst those that, uh, that know and see us in the, in the county and the state. So anyway, just a little bit of mayor's privilege. Thank you, Chief Williams. Uh, let's go to that consent agenda now. It, it, it consists of the approval of minutes to approve the minutes from the city council meeting of 327-24, to approve the board audit report from March, 2024, and to approve the Siena Hills open space dedication. Uh, council, are there any minor questions or clarifications or are there any items at this time that you would like to remove from the consent agenda? Mayor, if I could, I'd like to make a motion that we pull out uh, number 4B, the board audit report, to just discuss it a little bit. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Henderson, a second by Councilman Belliston. All in favor to remove item 4B from the consent agenda? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is removed. A council, at this time, I will turn to you for a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of items 4A and 4C as listed on the agenda as read. Mayor, I'll make a motion we approve uh, consent, ag consent agenda items 4A for the approval of the minutes and 4C for the CD Hills open space dedication. You've heard the motion by Councilman Coates. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Mayor. Second by Councilman Ivey. The portion of the consent agenda is approved. Councilman Henderson, you made the motion to uh, to discuss separately the uh, 2024 March 2024 board audit report. Go ahead and start that discussion. Sure, thank you, Mayor. I just noticed as I was going through here, it looks like uh, as you uh, look at the different credit cards and uh oh, what did I do here? Uh, and what they're assigned to the city you know, a department they're, that they're assigned to. I, I think there's some issues there. It looks to me like, uh, you know, some of the city departments, the, it, are, it, I don't know. It doesn't it, make sense. It doesn't make like sense. It says, Unless Jeremy's buying skid steer forks. Um, no, let me, maybe I can help you a little bit. Uh, the, the GL codes are, these are not credit card numbers. These are general ledger codes. So they're the codes that they get charged to. They're not individual credit card numbers. So somebody, for instance, I might be, buy something on my credit card that belongs to the power department or gets coded to the power department. So that's how that ends up. But, so if, if something gets applied, for instance, to the city manager, so a sympathy basket, that might have been on, but, on um, let's, Shelley's credit card, but it goes under my... So let, let me... Sec. Yeah, sorry, but it goes under my uh, my account, if that makes sense. And so, so, so an example, Councilman Coates, there's one here that says it's gas, so it's Exxon Fast Gas for the the UAMPS meeting, but it went under the city manager, which I would think that would be under the power department. Yeah, that that could be a miscoded item. So I'm happy it, to look at it, that. There's a bunch item. of them here in here that look like somehow the spreadsheet got weird like looks there's like that just got misaligned or you're, something. you're probably correct because it looks like all of those that say city manager on there are are uh or most of them are power so we may have gotten the spreadsheet okay, mixed so up, legislative brian affairs, and i are happy to look at it councilman belson go ahead legislative affairs comes up with cleaning and a, a stove for station 61 and then we got um uh jordan travel under power department and public works we have tactical boots under the golf. Like, so I apologize for that. I, in three and a half years is the first time anyone's brought up uh, any of the board audit items. And so I'm happy to look at that and see where we've maybe misaligned those. But it looks like you're correct. They, they're legitimate charges, but the departments may be incorrectly labeled. So I would recommend that we, you, you go ahead and not approve it at this point. We'll get it we'll get it changed and, and corrected and then we'll bring it back at the next council meeting for approval if that's acceptable. that sounds reasonable council okay with that that said i'll call for a motion to um to table and correct deny or table jeremy can, can i ask one more question oh, table would be great go ahead councilman so if we had the board audit report the i like the quick summary that we had for february but then we had the board audit report and then we had a new breakdown for the board audit report for March, but we didn't have the overall summary because this is for February and March. 
So we started breaking them down different, but you see where I'm saying. Like, Brian, do you want to come address that? I, I really like just the first page on February. You have February total grand total for it. And, and then we broke it down. And then in March, you didn't have that. And I really like that because that shows you the totals of all the departments kind of summed up. So well, hold on one second, Brian. I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to respond. But, but let me just say for those here, this is an important part of what the council does. The council, part of their duties is to oversee that budget. And we have an excellent finance department, but, but sometimes the spreadsheet could get a little screwed up. Oh, okay. So this is exactly the right way to address that with the manager, with the finance director. So Brian, if you could address the council's so questions we there. we make some changes to the spreadsheet. And so we'll go back and look at it and make sure everything aligns. It, it is tied to spreadsheet and it summarizes in a table. So we'll make sure everything's tied back and it all balances. We get those GL codes and so categories we'll, correct. Yeah, and then we'll change how we do it and make sure that in the future that it comes over how it should be every time. Okay. You good with that, Council? Yeah, I was just saying I hope we get this in the March as well, which is just the overall of each department. It's not. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. We, we just didn't have it for March, but we had it for February. And you, yeah. you were able to see the, yeah. the report that the Councilman showed you? I know what he's talking about. Okay. We Thanks. tweaked it a little, so we'll make sure both yeah. of them show up. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. All right, Council, I'm going to call for a motion to uh, table the March 2024 Board Audit Report to the April um what's the next meeting april 20 what are we today so april 24th meeting so mayor it's february and march the okay the february and march and tariff you could just update that on the agenda that it shows the february and march board audit reports on the agenda so we'll table those to april 24th if, if someone can make that a motion that motion so moved mayor Motion by Councilman Coates. Second. Second by Councilman Henderson. Those in favor of tabling the items as explained, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We have made it through the consent agenda. And now we have um, primarily an agenda that consists of resolutions. Resolutions will do roll call vote. Let's start with um, what may be the, the most discussed resolution. That's going to be 5A, consideration to approve a resolution distributing the recreation, arts, and parks tax to the Washington City Arts Council. And I am going, Jeremy, who is presenting on this item? Um, I'm happy to present. Mayor. Sorry, now I have to get out of my board audit report here and find the find the packet. We, we uh, do wrap tax now once a year based on your new um, approved wrap tax ordinance. We did have two applications, one of which has pulled their application. The second application is for the Washington City Arts Council and and they are applying for 30, let's see, $35,500 is the request. I would mention that we as of this moment, don't have the 501c3 paperwork yet for the Arts Council. So they, I know they've been working on that and separating from the Southern Utah Art Guild. So they have been uh, working on that paperwork. But I would request that if you decide to do a, um, a wrap tax approval, that you do it contingent upon receiving that paperwork because we, we have to have that before we can distribute funds and then, and then put some sort of a time limit on that. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, something that we would need to have that paperwork. So Jeremy, can I ask you in, ahead, in the the application process, I'm switching subjects a little bit, just on the receipts and bringing back, I know we've kind of made that a rule, but is that, do we need to update that in our way that people apply or is that just something we're doing? We're just doing that as we go. So they have one year once they receive an application to, to expend the funds and, and uh, bring back their their reports. So what happens if we we only dish, issue the funds after the receipts are brought in or do we issue the funds and they give us a receipt? So, um, well, it depends on what it is. If, if somebody was buying something, one item, then sometimes they'll purchase it and we'll reimburse with the receipt. But often we will issue them the funds and then they will expend them how they've told us they will. And then they will bring back the receipts or the the report the pictures. I mean, sometimes they're doing an event. They're doing things that they can't 
they can't, you know. What if they don't spend all the money? Ahead of time. Have we had that happen? I don't believe we have. Not since I've been here have we had not somebody not spend the funds they said they would spend. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Good questions. Um, is there a representative from the Washington City Arts Council here this evening for this item? All right. Come on forward, and if you'll just uh, state your name for the record and, and speak, uh, speak to the council about uh, your request. And then once you've had a chance to kind of present to the council, I'll, I'll uh, open it up to the council to interact with you a little bit and, and maybe ask you some, a few questions and, okay. and interact there. Uh, my name's Todd Prince. I'm just new to the Arts Council, like in January, so I've only been with them a few months. Uh, as opposed to the others who have been on a few years. So I'm a little bit of a at a disadvantage. So I will try and answer to the best of my ability. If there is something I can't answer, I'll have to defer until I can talk to someone else and get the answer. And so. may maybe before some questions, can you just start? So it's a $35,000 request. Can you give us just a little bit of context for that? Yes. Um, this will be applied to multiple projects throughout the year, including numerous workshops, so about seven to 10 workshops, adult workshops, children's workshops, kids art in the park, uh, two gallery exhibits at the Red Cliff Gallery, so there's a fall show and a winter show, uh, all about art festival in the fall, which is an art festival. It's a, last year it was a one day festival, um, and then this year we're proposing a two day festival. And Todd, so, that would be here in Veterans Park again. That That's the Washington Veterans City Park, event. Yes. Okay. Correct. And I feel I'm forgetting some. Oh, the art gala. Um, did Melanie, did they have that gala last year, Michelle? No, but we're going to return that this year. And Tell we'll, us about the art gala. Um, it's a celebration of art. So we invite artists, we have food, musicians. We'll probably this year institute a silent auction to generate some revenues and also possibly institute a ticket to purchase to get into sure. the event. Where would that uh, take place? Well, last year it took place at Brio, but I'm oh, looking, okay. uh, I'm actually the large events chair. Um, so I'm in charge of all about art and yeah. the gala. Yeah. And right now I'm looking at the community center cool. where you actually gave the um, state of the city yes, address. Yes. So that's the spot I'm looking at. So Great. did you make the decision to do the the kids? Um, what is it called? Kids in the park. Kids art in the park. Yeah. Did you decide to do that? I didn't see that on the application. But did, has that been a decision to do that again? Um, Michelle. Yes. Is it a separate event than the all about art or? Oh, it is a separate. Okay. It's I didn't see that on the, the kids in the probably park. Probably included in the workshops. Yes. So that would be like um, other expenses and supplies, facility rentals. Those would be the primary expenses under that. So that would be included. It, it's. It is one of our workshops, but it is geared towards children. Okay, I'm glad that you're doing that. I really thought that was a, I feel like that's a really good event. I just didn't see it specifically listed in your application. And so that's just under the other expenses and supplies. And then it goes with the workshops. Mm -hmm. And then possibly is it, it's also with the facility rent. Yeah, again, I'm at a disadvantage because I didn't write the application, but I probably will be helping next year <laughs> or the next time. So I will make sure that gets in. So can you explain or tell me how much we're paying for the, the Red Cliffs Gallery? Is it the full 8200 that was in the application or because it looks like it's all about art? I mean, what fees are there? Just kind of trying to break down where those rental fees are coming from. There's the, the rental of the space itself. Um, Melanie, Michelle, do you recall how much it is for rental of that space, uh, Red Cliff Gallery? I actually have that information because um, I called Deb and um, it's actually $150, $150 every time for a five to six week um, show. And then they pay an individual to be there to collect money for the sales. And 
I didn't get the the cost that they pay to have him or her sit there. So, so what's the 8,200 going to then? Uh, are no, we thinking I don't it have. might be the individual that's at the gallery? I know when I've been before, they have somebody that's kind of there. So when you walk in and look, they kind of can direct and interact. And handle sales, yes. Primary, yes. Yeah. Mayor, may I ask a, Please, make a comment Henderson. or ask a question? <clears throat> um, so first of all, I really love what the uh, art um, council is doing. Uh, love the community events. I love the uh, art in the park. That was a lot of fun. I uh, love it. And um, any of the workshops and things that are open to the community. I think we need to be careful um, using the taxpayer funds we need to be careful not to spend taxpayer funds to market like individual artist sales. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, for instance, like, uh, you know, if I'm an artist and I have a painting that's for sale for $20,000, you know, or 2000 or whatever it is, um, I think we just need to be careful not to commingle some of these funds that you know, are meant to be community events and community funds. Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's kind of a fine line. I mean, I, I would, I don't think I would like community funds used to market for a private art sale, you know, or something like that, um, you know, where a artist is just selling their product and using taxpayer funds to market for it. And that's just kind of what I want to be cautious about. Yeah. Has there been a situation where that's come up? Well, I think the thing that came up, that's why I'm asking about the Red Cliffs, and is that the artists sell their artwork there, and we're paying the fee through the wrap tax for them to go. For the marketing for yeah. that. And yes. The, the Red Cliffs Gallery Show is primarily, well, it is mostly uh, Washington City artists. So they, they reside here in the city. Yeah, I'm just saying that we're using public funds to market for a personal individual to sell mm -hmm. their paintings. So maybe separate out our marketing costs for that particular show. Well, I'm just saying that that's just what that was the example that we mm -hmm. were, we were wondering what was happening, and we just don't want to promote that we're helping one artist or two artists be able to sell their art and not. And why is the rest of the public covering that? When the the I, I love the arts council like every everything's been great i've loved it i just i just don't, don't want to go down a road that we're not supposed to be going down and one of the things i love is the workshops with the kids and the adults like i we should buy all the art supplies we need for them work toward that but i'm concerned about paying for rental fees to go sell your art for the specifically the red cliffs gallery that's the one example i have okay so uh, i yes. mean I, I don't know if it's like let me ask this on the all about the arts and the art park, right? Mm -hmm. All those artists had to pay a booth fee to be there. Yes. So, okay, I assumed, and so they paid a booth fee to be there, and then they can sell their art there. Yes. And we, we but the city provides services that are we charging you for those services? Yes, we pay for those. Okay, so those are things that I'm okay to support if it's you know, like covering those costs or, or we waive those costs in lieu of giving them actual money or something like that. But I'm, I'm just asking the council what they want to do, really. Yeah, like, that's felt, just felt, this, yeah sorry, in addition to like the marketing for the Red Cliffs Gallery, I also feel like the, the it's really an opportunity for the artists to display their art at the Red Cliffs Gallery. And I feel um, like that they should you know, pay for the expense to not only display it there, but then the cost to either have someone sit there or an idea was to maybe have the artists take turns sitting there to collect the funds. And so not only is it for me, the marketing, but it would also be, I, I wouldn't want to um, have any of the, the RAP tax funding go to, you know, the costs associated with having them display their art at the, the Red Cliffs Gallery. I'm very supportive. I really, you know, I've seen the, the great interest that there is in the workshops as well, like councils, the other council members have mentioned and the interest in that. And so I'm, I feel like those are really great community events that bring a lot of people here. 
And so I'm I'm supportive of the all about art and the and then the workshops, but the the Red Cliffs Gallery fees is something that uh, I feel like should be a separate cost that is not paid by the wrap tax. By the wrap funding. tax, yeah. J just um, a, a point regarding that is it is the Arts Council goal eventually to move that exhibit to Washington City uh, once we find a suitable space. That's why we were so interested in the renovation of the gym. Uh, so that we could possibly host that exhibit there. Yeah. Did you notice space. the nice uh, art hanging that we yep. have in the back? Isn't in that a back. nice addition? Yep. So uh, another event that we really enjoyed is when the council got together and drew pictures. Paint night. Paint night. Yep. Planning and, to do that again. Uh, if the council requests uh, the winner gets money, then we can't do that either. <laughs> Councilman Henderson, you perennial winner. <laughs> but uh, I just was wondering, my question is, um, out of the allocation that you received last from Washington State, I'm not sure if it was 20, end of 22 or 23, is there any money, any of those funds left that have not been spent? Melanie, you, you did the report. Do you have those numbers? No? No? I do not have that information with me. I did not see the report that was submitted. That was actually... Uh, Maybe about the time I came on the board. So I think I, I think I sent everybody out the report. It looked to me like they had receipts for everything that they had been awarded. They expended the amount. That's what it looked okay, like. And that was only my, my only question. Just wondering if we needed to figure that into whatever the council's allotment. Could so be we tonight. did expend all the monies. <laughs> I, I can't say that 100%, but you, <laughs> but you turned in reports that showed that you had expenses Judgment. that equaled the amount that you were awarded. Yeah, I would be surprised if we didn't, based on the expenses for all the activities that we've had. So if I do this again, I will be better prepared because I'll be more experienced and have done this for a year. And, you know, you make a good point in saying a year, because as I recall, we, we used to do this semi-annually and we, that, that deadline was missed six months ago. So your last application was a year. So here we are this will be the one time council that will consider uh, wrap applications from the public um, you can approve the application um, you know as presented you know, with the likely with the um, with the condition of the 501c3 uh, you could modify the amount you could table the the uh, the, the approval um, but I, th I think what this body agrees is that you add a lot of value to our community and there is value in art and we appreciate the passion and, and it's, it's an important component of, of what makes up a community. And so this council just wants to, I think if I'm reading them right, they want to get it right, support the council, support the arts council without, uh, without crossing any lines that shouldn't be crossed. <laughs> so. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I so, agree. So, I mean, you, you will be seeing more of me in this coming year. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but just to tell you a little bit about me, um, I, I spent 30 years with Utah State Parks, um, most re recently up in Cedar City at Frontier Homestead. Um, while I was up there, I was also president of the Cedar City Arts Council for a number of years. Um, when I was president, we got the wrap tax passed up in Cedar City. So I was, I, yeah, I had my hands in everything up yeah. there with that. I was also the chair of the um, um, Iron County Travel Advisory Board, and we distributed um, TRT funds, um, very similar to wrap tax. But, yeah. and, and so I appreciate the um, importance of making sure tax dollars are spent appropriately and that they benefit the county and the taxpayer. So Wonderful. Well I am said. open to any feedback you have on anything we're doing. I'll look to you, Council. I'll primarily look to you, Councilwoman Casperson, as I know this is your assignment. And I don't know if anyone else had any options or any other comments. I just had one more um, comment that I wanted to make. I had a conversation with Deb about the, is it? Yeah, the art gala that you do. Yes. And she was saying that you guys don't charge right now. And something that I think would be beneficial is to 
to have that charge. So then maybe that the event, the, the charge that you do that will pay for the event and help cover those costs rather than have the rap tax pay for that full amount for the gala. Yeah, actually, if I may, um, I do have, I, I prepared a couple budgets, uh, one for All About Art and one for the gala. Um, so please, can Todd, I bring those up? Yes. Would it be appropriate to just um, table this and, you know, because there was some concerns on the the Redcliffe Gallery art shows and some of those costs and marketing and whatnot are mixed amongst other line items, right? I, I, I like what you're saying, Councilman. I think I hear you saying that we want to make sure we get it right and sometimes without having the time to really look at it, right. you, you might shoot but miss. We, we want to shoot like Officer Nash and uh, get us down. Um, Todd, would, would that be the end of the world for you if, if we tabled for a couple of weeks while we looked at these numbers a little more closely? I, I think generally, you have the support, but mm -hmm. there are just a few questions, but and, but we have time to address some of those now too, if you wanna continue the discussion. I think we should give them some feedback. So I think there's concerns about the gala is mm -hmm. one and paying those like we talked about. But the other one that I think brought up was the website scheduling and payments, like $7,000 caught my eye. I don't know what websites cost right now. I don't know how that contributes to our art community, but that one concerned me as well. Yeah, the, um, actually, I just got a, um, an email from uh, the web designer like an hour ago, and he said it would cost five, six thousand dollar range to put together a full website, which would include um, the full website would include pages for all about art, the gala, the workshops. Um, anything else we do, um, the, the, the fall and the winter show, and, and if we get back into the heritage show uh, with Cotton Days. Um, so we would have individual, individual pages for all those. We'd also have capability for taking payments um, for the entry fees for um, All About Art. What else am I thinking of here? There was something else I was thinking of. Um, so it, it would have the payment capability, it would have registration capability, people could um, submit applications online. So it would have all those capabilities. And, and right now everything is email and paper copies. This would digitize most everything that we do and make us more efficient um, and hopefully reduce some of our um, costs that we have right now. So, so you're with, saying that the website setup is the, the bulk of it is a one-time setup fee. That is a one-time setup fee. And the fee. ongoing fees wouldn't be... We'll, we'll have to yeah. pay um, the... Uh, the maintenance and... Uh, yeah, the maintenance. Well, I'll probably do most of the maintenance myself, so there's not a cost there. It would be the domain name that we have mm -hmm. to pay every year and for the hosting cost Yeah. Uh, through Webflow is who it would be gone through. May I make a comment, Mayor? Please, Councilman. So I... I'm in support of that 100%. I think what I am, want to be cautious about is that the website wouldn't turn into like an art sales website for individual artists. Mm, no. Because you know? um, I just don't want to co-mingle, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. mean, if you guys wanted to have a website to market individual artists' art for sale, that would have to be a totally separate website paid for by the artists. Yeah, no, no, we wouldn't go. So, no, we wouldn't be going, doing okay. that. Um, the, the one thing we would do for the sales through the gallery is we're looking at Square and getting an iPad or a phone that could process those sales. So that would be separate from the other items that we're doing with wrap tax funds. Okay, absolutely. So how do we want to move forward with this? Because I think we may need some adjustments to probably. I'd let me like just, if I can ask one more question before you get to kind of. Are you done, Councilman? Councilman Ivy. So could we just get an update on their uh, nonprofit status where we're at? I know the city's worked hard to try to get that in place. We've helped with that. I know that's kind of been a, a difficult thing to get done. Mm -hmm. We can just get a status update on that and maybe Maybe yes. talk about what we can do to help get that done. All the paperwork is submitted, and all we're waiting for right now is we got our federal identification number. We got our um, 
oh, I forget what it was from the state. We got our certificate from the state. Um, and then all we're waiting for right now is the 501c3 letter from the IRS. And we talked to the lawyer a few days ago, and he said it should be on its way in the mail. Now, Deb was supposed to go check the mailbox to see if it's there, but her significant other had a heart attack a couple days ago. So she has been at the hospital and he had another heart attack last night. So Ugh. she has, hasn't been able to make it to the to post office box to see if it's there. It might actually be sitting there and we just don't have it in our hand right now. So, it, you know, we might have it uh, early next week. It's a good so, question. Good progress. Can I ask another question? I've been, first of all, just very impressed. This has been good interaction and appreciate you stepping in. It, it sounds like it kind of at short notice. Uh, and, last night. <laughs> and, and thoughts and prayers go out to, to yeah. Deb and, and, and that situation. Um, in Cedar City, were, was it a the Cedar City Arts Council, did you say? Cedar City Arts Council, yes. Is, was it a private organization or was it a city-sponsored organization? Um, it was a private 501c3. It had support from the city. Okay. I mean, we applied for RAP tax. Um, okay. We're the ones that pushed through the RAP tax um, um, to get it on the, the, the ballot, ballot and get it passed. But after that, we stepped back and then we were just a private entity. But okay. yeah, we, we didn't have direct support from Cedar City government. Okay. Thank you. Council, further questions, comments with with um, with Mr. Prince? I just have one more question. Do you do any sponsorships at the All About Art event? Because um, I feel like that would be a great way to maybe help cover some of the, the costs associated with that too, and where you have such a large you know, gathering that comes to those events. I wonder if that could help. Yeah, last year there, the sponsorships came in the form of gift baskets that were um, remind me, Melanie, were they sold and then supported for the Dove Center? Or did those go to a drawing for the artists? Those were drawing for the artists. So it's our plan this year to solicit um, sponsorships, both individual and business, to help support that. In fact, I think that is on the All About Art um, budget that I passed around. And then also to your question about um, the Red Cliffs Gallery costs. I have a summary sheet here showing our costs um, for our different shows and projects. And then this is a detailed uh, cost list here. So this is a summary and this is detailed. I'll leave that with you so you can see the, the and, exact cost. So if you want to reduce any amount you're recommending, you can and, 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 and I'll ask you to leave that with Councilman Casperson, and, okay. and she may be the best one to coordinate with on some of these items as you prepare to come back, as, as we've heard the, the Council's feedback on that. Further discussion, further uh, uh, directives, or, or are we comfortable tabling for now, or is there anything else that you want to put on the record, Councilman Coates? I just think we table and let them, and they've heard our feedback, rework the numbers, and let's look at find, find a way forward after get a, that get a nice so thing. we'll have an invitation to come back then absolutely you will absolutely and and if you can kind of continue to coordinate with the, the liaison of the arts council that, that would be great and we really appreciate your time and and um it sounds like you've got some great experience that will will add value to to a group that's 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 budding and growing here in our city. So. Yeah, no, they, they've done great stuff. So I'm and just I, and, to and that. your timing was perfect because we see you and right behind you we see all this great artwork that yep, that, Deb pushed to get that in and that's installed. Now, so, uh, I, so if, Mayor, if, can I ask something to you real quick? Please go ahead. I just want to say thank you for coming too, and um, I I do appreciate the art and the value that it adds to the city, and so just wanted to add that. Councilman, would you mind making the motion to table that? Is two weeks enough, do you feel like? Feel, you feel good about that, Council? So I'll make a motion to table. Is it 5A? 5A until the April 24th meeting. Perfect. We have motion to table uh, item 5A for two weeks by Councilwoman Casperson. Is there a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman. Belliston. I think we both 
did, but you can have this one. And since it's a resolution, we're going we're to go roll call even on the table. Um, uh, point of order, Councilman Coates. Oh, I just said I'll go first. You want to go first? I'm just trying to mix it up a little bit. All right, Coates. Aye. Henderson. Aye. Belliston. Aye. Casperson. Aye. Ivy. Aye. Okay, thank you. Aye. Great interaction. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, as noted, item 5B was removed uh, by the applicant. So we'll move along to item 5C. This is consideration to approve a compensation resolution for Utah Local Governments Trust. Um, I've said no to a lot of boards. I did say yes to this one. It does require a little bit of travel up to the, the facility there in Northern Utah, and they uh, need that memorialized by resolution. Anyone would like to make a motion to that? Mayor, I'll make the motion that we approve the compensation resolution for the Utah Local Government and Trust. Second. Motion by Councilman Coates, second by Councilman Belliston. We'll go Henderson. Aye. Belliston. Aye. Casperson. Aye. Ivy. Aye. Coates. That approves unanimously. 5D, this is consideration to approve a resolution authorizing a tax certificate an agreement for UAMP's firm power supply project and related matters. I always love it when they say and related matters. Power Director Rick Hansen, take it away. Don't ask me what those mean, related matters. But, um, and I guess on this item, we can maybe go as little or as far as you want to go. Uh, if uh, I guess all but Councilman Belliston was here in December, when we approved, or you approved a similar resolution for the UAMPS uh, NEBO project prepay on the gas. This is a, basically a close, close cousin to that. Uh, it would put the Red Mesa, Red Mesa Solar and the Steel Solar projects through that same prepay. Since they're a different project within UAMPS, we need a separate resolution for those. Uh, the two solars are under the firm project, the Nebo's on its own. Uh, again, the, the underlying uh, goal and the reason why they're doing this is to reduce costs and they feel like they can have a target of an 8% reduction. In the case of the gas, it was 8% on the gas costs and here it would actually be just right off of the uh, what the cost of the output of the solar facility is. So. Um, and it's a, a mechanism that's used through or allowed through the IRS to take advantage of the difference between taxable and non-taxable bonds. So, so again, I, I don't know. Uh, that's a, a good presentation. Uh, most of us are familiar. I know Councilman Coates works as the liaison there. I see the recommendation is to approve. Council, do you have any clarifying questions or comments on this item for our power director? I'm just wondering if the related matters are, are, apply, are relevant to the legal, any other legal matters that are with that. It seems like they that would make put sense. put that on all their resolutions, so that's just standard language. So maybe Dad can answer why. I kind of meant that more as a joke. I mean, they, <laughs> the, 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 the drafters like to get wordy sometimes, and then... And they must get paid by the word. I don't know. <laughs> You've read the resolution. It has a recommendation of our power director of the power board. Is there any additional discussion or questions on this before I call for motion to approve? Mayor, I can make that motion if you're ready for it. Councilman Ivey. Make a motion to approve a resolution authorizing a tax certificate and agreement for UAMP's firm power supply project and related matters. I have a motion by Councilman Ivey. Second by Councilman Coates. Belliston. Aye. Casperson. Aye. Ivey. Aye. Coates. Aye. And Henderson. Aye. Thank that you. is approved unanimously. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Hansen. Item 5E, this is consideration to approve a resolution authorizing the Washington City Public Safety and Firefighter Department's Tier 2 Contributory Retirement System. Uh, I'll invite Human Resource Director Ruth Holyoke to come forward. I know we did this back in 2020, but it sounds like URS is asking for an update of the names. Tell us more. 
Yes, so back in 2020, as you guys recall, we did the required pickup that the employees normally would pick up. It was a 2.59% back four years ago. Um, this year, legislative has increased that amount to 4.73%. And, and so we're just amending the resolution to the increased percentage amount to contribute for on behalf of the employee. We don't get a chance to see Ruth very often over here, so take advantage of the time you have. <laughs> Any questions Any for questions? Human Resource Director? <laughs> Seeing none, I'll call for a motion on this item. May I make a motion that we approve Resolution R-2024-2024-2024. Public Safety and Firefighter Department's Tier 2 Contributory Retirement System. I have a motion by Councilman Belliston. Second. Second by Councilman Coates. Uh, Casperson. Aye. Ivy. Aye. Coates. Aye. Henderson. Aye. Belliston. Aye. That approves, that is approved unanimously. The last of a meeting full of resolutions is item 5F. This is consideration to approve a resolution appointing members to the Justice Court Nominating Commission. You've known one for a long time and you met one recently. Thad, take it away. Yeah, this is a, <clears throat> this is a formality to satisfy state law. Um, the Utah, Office of state, Utah State Office of the Courts uh, and state law permit this city to appoint two uh, commission members when the vacancy is in our court, but they need from us a record that shows that our legislative body did that appointment. So the names recommended came through the mayor and the mayor worked with myself and Shelly and the manager to, to kind of decide on two names. And so the request tonight is that the council uh, give their, their consent to these names. And if they do so, we'll provide that to the state and that'll help us move forward with the new hiring process. Thank you. Who would like to make a motion on this item? Well, I wanted to ask a question to Thad first. Oh, go ahead. Thad, have you contacted these two individuals? <laughs> I, I do know both of them. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, Mayor, I make a motion. We approve this resolution for the Justice Court nomination and the, the members of Thad Segmiller and Shelley. The uh, it's not is it Shell is it Shelley who's the other uh, individual? So it's Shelley, but not not uh, admin Shelley. It's uh, yeah. victims advocate Shelley. Shelley. Ken okay. Delaria. Yeah, yep, we met her yep. just recently. Thank you, Councilman Coates. You've you've heard the motion. Is would someone like to second that? I'll second that. A motion by Councilman Coates, second by Councilwoman Casperson. Uh, let's start. Are we on Ivy? Ivy I. Coates. Henderson, Aye. Belliston, Aye. Casperson. Aye. We have made it through all of the resolutions. <laughs> Item six, we are on to report of officers from assigned committee. And we typically start on that end. Councilman Belliston, you wanna, you have anything to report from your committee assignments? Councilman Henderson. Mayor, I don't have anything today. Thank you. Councilman Colts. Yeah, so we had solid waste this week on Monday. Uh, a couple things that just make the council aware of, uh, and I think I did last time, but so the landfill has gas that they burn off. That's just gas that gets built up by landfills, but it's not a very much gas, like it hasn't been able to be utilized, but we're starting to look at ways to utilize that gas, maybe produce an energy. It's started to become enough that we can one of the things we've talked about is having there's a group that'll come in and build a facility and and utilize that gas to power up a building and then have servers and it'd be a server farm in there so there's that there's also where's talks uh i met with mayor billings over in hurricane she asked us to get involved over she, she invited UAMS and Dixie State College, and they're looking at potentials. I don't think it's big enough for UAMS yet, but we're definitely looking at options. So we're trying to find a way to monetize that. Historically, we would just burn off, but now we can maybe monetize that to help fund some small stuff at the district. So we're looking at those options. And then uh, as far as the options on the 
the new scale houses and stuff. It's under, it's going pretty good. You should drive out there. It's been a lot of work with our staff and their staff to try to get things rolling really good. Our so, footing's poured. How far are we? Um, I don't know. I have to drive out there. I just know they're going. <laughs> okay. I know they're trying to get the utilities to the site. Most of it's earthwork right now is the report I got. So, and I haven't, didn't drive that way this week. So, <laughs> but they got to get sewer in. I mean, I mean, I could call up Blake. He'd probably know better than me, but he doesn't know either. It sounds like <laughs> it's a staff who knows, which is good. They're the ones who should know. Well, That's I think good. it's interesting that it's two of your main assignments. You, you, you got solid waste and power. The, the, the worlds are colliding there with, with those two. Well, and it's not close to a wash, so it's not flooding on the flood control. So <laughs> yeah. That's, I can check that off. Yeah, no. we, can't, we can't have all three. <laughs> and I have um, and nothing to report on power. You, I mean, Rick usually covers it when he's here, so we're, we're doing good. I think... Uh, the other, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the city, so just watch out. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my report for tonight. Is there any questions on any of that? Is that like methane? Is that what that is? Yeah, that comes out it's of a there? methane gas. Huh. And they have to drill wells. That's what all those black pipes are mm -hmm. up on there. They have to drill wells, and then it collects it, and then they go burn it off so it's yeah. safe. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. Huh. But we're trying to be able, like big landfills can run a lot of power, like big, yeah. big landfills. Well, but we're when I get there early in the morning, it's burning bright, you know, I mean, yeah. you can see it. So, yeah. nice. Thank you. Good report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Ivey. So just a reminder for the League of Ta Cities and Towns, I know you mentioned that, Mayor, and we've already set up some meetings with uh, League officials and some key legislators to talk about some things for the upcoming sessions, some legislative bills that are being considered to be um, sponsored and ran. So um, those will those will transpire the, the duration of the league when it's in uh, St. George later this month. And then just wanted to report on uh, Washington Area Chamber of Commerce. They have a lunch coming up um, on Tuesday, April 16th, 1130. Um, Senator Vickers, Representative Elison, and myself will be presenting at the Spring Hill Suites at April 16th, 1130. Um, just invite anyone to come. The, the Washington Area Chamber does a great job. There was a great luncheon earlier this week where it was just standing room only, a great meal, and, and just some great uh, interaction there. So that's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Ivey. Councilman Casperson. I just want to share a little bit more about the Washington City Arts Council and all the workshops. They have some art, uh, workshops in April, May, June, and uh, I'm going to plan on attending them and paying to do it so I can take home the trophy next year yeah. and be. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> and beat Councilman <laughs> Henderson. Challenge accepted, my <laughs> friend. So um, as those as that information comes out, I'll keep everyone updated and except for Councilman Henderson, I won't tell him. So <laughs> so I don't have the, you know the competition. So. <laughs> I noticed he had a lot of family there. Did you guys notice that? I wonder if they were putting the tickets in for him. Uh, I, I'll just give an update on, on water. Uh, the, the Washington County Water Conservancy District, we, we continue to, to move forward with the 20-year plan. We continue to wa monitor water levels. We continue to coordinate with all of the you know, retail municipalities that we work with, but I thought you might find it interesting just for a little bit of an update. Um, I, I think the summary would be that um, while last year was a banner year, I mean, it was very close to record breaking throughout the season. Um, this water year, as the snow tail reports were, came through, um, started off very slow, but I'm happy to report that we, we finished the year as an average water year, which when you look in, in such a long context, that's actually a really, a really good year for us. We had some, some late moisture that, that uh, some late storms that, that delayed spring, but that did a good job for us. And so that's important because for about 18 of the last 22 years, we've been in some level of drought. So an average year with, with, um, with soil that um, is, is saturated already. That's a pretty good thing. So let me just run through some, some stats here. Um, our snowpack as of yesterday 
was at 121% of median. So we're in pretty good shape that way. Um, our reservoirs are full, although they won't say 100%. Each reservoir, as Zach continues to say, they all have their own personality. So full for some is not 100%. But Sand Hollow is at 98%. Quail Creek is at 79%. Colob at 92%. And Gunlock is at 100%. Don't tell our neighbors in Las Vegas. They all like to come up when, when the falls are are running there. Um, we store nearly 100,000 acre feet of water in our local reservoirs, or I kind of, in my simplified brain, see those as our savings accounts. Um, in 2022, approximately 55,000 acre feet of water was applied to the community. So our reservoirs are nearly twice the amount that was supplied collectively. Even in wet years and with high reservoir levels, we continue to need to conserve um, as every water year is different. So we can't take our, our, our eye off that. Obviously water safe today will be available for use tomorrow. Uh, the district has plans to add multiple new reservoirs throughout the county to continue to augment storage. The Chief Toker Reservoir, you've heard that in the news recently, that is a, a approximately 4,000 acre foot reservoir. It's under construction and we've, we've actually even received some, some federal grant money for that, about 7.5 million at least. Uh, the dry wash, uh, reservoir it will be about 1,500 acre foot of water that's going to be in Ivan's. The graveyard wash reservoir will be approximately 2,000 acre foot. That's a reservoir near the St. George and Santa Clara area. And then there's also the Cove reservoir that'll be approximately 6,000 acre foot uh, reservoir. It's in Cal uh, King County. And, but the, it's a cooperative project, but the downstream flows benefit Washington County. So I just kind of wanted to give you an update on, on where we are and what's happening. We continue to have um, significant um, investment in infrastructure. And the way that uh, we discuss it as a board and with the staff there is that the low hanging fruit has been picked. So when we're talking about wholesale water supply to the municipalities, we're, we're climbing up the ladder and we're stretching for, for the, the fruit in terms of acre foot of water. So that's my, uh, that's, that's my report on, on my, uh, one of my main assignments. So. Could you send those to those that yeah. document? Yep, I'm happy to do it. In fact, I think I'm going to write my mayor's message for next month on that oh, as well. So I'm just kind of getting some information gathered for that. So, but yeah, I'll be happy to share that with the council. And um, that takes us to our next item, which is the city manager report. Thank you, Mary. I just wanted to mention one thing we've recognized as, as staff and, and our public safety some parking issues at Sullivan Park. I don't know if anybody's been there recently, but when there are large events, um, we're, we're having issues with parking, we're having issues with being able to get emergency vehicles and services to people at the end of the park. Um, we met this week, had some really good ideas, looking at possibly adding additional parking where we can. We've removed things that were blocking existing parking stalls. But one thing that came up is um, we really need to ask our residents to avoid parking in the red the red designated zones because one thing that happens is as people do that it clogs those lanes down to one lane and really bogs down traffic and makes it almost impossible for emergency vehicles to get in there so we're going to be doing painting some new painting projects putting up some signage with no parking signs in the appropriate places and we'll be stepping up enforcement for people that are parking in those red areas so if we can get that word out to people that should really help us a lot. We'll see what, what we can do there before we start being becoming more aggressive in our enforcement. But we'll 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 try to we'll try to enforce the minimum that we can to get compliance and 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 move forward from there. So we've had this discussion, Jeremy, you and I, but just have we talked about the programming? Because the biggest yes. problem is yep. the overlap. Well, we and met the, and talked about programming the, and we also talked about having people that rent the facility um, you know, making requirements on their programming as well. So yeah, we, we're looking at all of that. And I think I kind of mentioned one of the, the issues that we have, it's not a great park for events, 
especially evening events. So when we already have programming in that park in an, in an evening, and then somebody wants to do an event that brings 200 more cars, it re just yeah. really don't have it. So we have to be really careful um, over programming, over over saturating that because we have we have pickleball that you know is constantly full. We have the fishing at the front of the park. We have soccer games. We have people using the trails. So we're looking at ways potentially to add more parking, but it's it's tight down there. There's not it's not great, but but that might be something that we look at is some of the events that want to happen that overlap with some of our existing programming may have to move to a different different park. It's a great park. It's wonderful. People love to use it, but but at some point we just we can't park everybody that wants to be there. It's oh, that, uh, it's oh go ahead. Go ahead I was just saying it's definitely interesting because you show up. I mean, my kids show up there for a soccer game. You can't find a spot. And then last night I go running down the trail and there's oodles of spots, right? So it's like, and they had a bunch of kids practicing, but it was like, why don't we just spread out the games a little bit and maybe have a field? This is my mind thinking, have a field practices on a certain night, but hey, you're practicing on these two fields or the other two are games or something like that kind of stuff is the stuff my mind's kind of spread it out a little bit. I mean, I know you handle it, you're working on it. I think it's going to take some collaboration to get it. There definitely needs to be some more parking. It's going to take a time to get that more parking yeah. and and some work. But it, I think it's the good thing is it's popular, right? I mean, it's a great park. It's Very just popular. we over program it. And because everyone we are short on field space. So I'm glad we're looking at it because I don't think the problem is going to go away. You know, Mayor, one more thing I might want to mention in relation to that is we attended a fishing event <laughs> there. That is a fishing event that happens at Sullivan Park. It's a beautiful spot for it. All the special needs children in the entire district go there. And there's just, I don't know how many buses, 15 buses maybe full of children that were all given fishing poles and a hat and they went out and fished. It was a wonderful event, but I noticed while I was there looking at part at their painting red probably that needs to happen but my question is this there's a, a little area of space where we we're thinking of putting the uh, wheels park a long time ago that's just east of the the uh, little fishing pond there there's like two acres there or something or an acre and a half could that that might possibly could be parking or if you're looking for area but just Right now we're looking at everything. The problem with that is it's on the other side of the trail. And so it, it, it's a little bit more difficult. You'd have cars crossing the trail and different things, but we're looking at all, all different options. Oh, so. there's that, there's that trail. That's right. Yep. Um, but it's, yeah. it's an amazing we'll, we'll, part. We'll come it's, up with some ideas. Um, yeah. like you say, it's, it's so busy and it's a beautiful park and people want to use it and they want to have events there and they want to, again, pickleball. <laughs> uh, it's a great place to start and use the trails and bike and walk and hike. And it's a great problem to have, but, but uh, we're popular. And so we need to come up with, with uh, ideas and we've got a great group working on it. So I'll, I'll keep you updated. That's great. Anything else, Jeremy? No, that's all I have. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, thank you. As stated at the beginning of the meeting, we do have need to go to closed session for uh, items 8A and 8C, pen, uh, purchase, exchange, or lease of property. Uh, character or professional competence of an individual. We will address those in that order. Um, I'd like to ask for a motion that we uh, move into closed session. So moved. Have a motion by Councilman Belliston. Second. Second by Councilman Coates. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm thinking that was unanimous. We will move into closed session. Thank you, everyone.